As C was becoming popular through the 1980s and 90s, it had lots of critics, and people found all sorts of shortcomings. One of the criticisms was from the scientific community complaining that C had no complex data types. Fortran had them, so it was obviously superior. Well, it's true that Fortran has an extremely sophisticated library of mathematical functions. But it was easy enough to write C code that performed complex operations, so several people did it. But to do it requires a library of functions. The people who needed complex numbers, and there were not that many of them, wrote their own. They almost all defined the macros named complex and imaginary for their declarations. The C99 Standards Committee decided to add these two new data types to C, but there was a problem. Lots of code had already been written, and a new standard with these two keywords would break the existing code, so they gave their names sort of funny spellings. They named them complex and imaginary, but they capitalized the first letter of the names and put underscore characters in front of them. These are now language keywords. That may seem a bit clumsy to you, so if you include the header complex.h, the lowercase simpler names are defined as macros, and you can use them instead. I'm not going to try to explain how the complex and imaginary numbers work. That's a number theory I don't want to go into. But for those of you who want to be able to perform complex arithmetic, there is a library of C functions for you to do just that. For example, to take the absolute value of a complex number, you call the function cabs. You might notice that this function call accepts a complex argument and returns a regular floating point number. The same is true for C arg, which returns the phase angle of N. The function CEXP returns the value of E to the nth power, where E is the base for natural logarithms. This is C imag, which returns the imaginary portion of the complex number, and C log returns the complex natural logarithm of n. This function returns the complex conjugate of n. The C pow function returns the complex value raised to the power of b. The function C proj returns the projection of n onto the Riemann sphere. C real returns the real portion of n. The function C square root returns the complex square root of the complex value of n. There is also a set of complex trig functions. Functions exist for the complex sine, cosine, and tangent of complex values, and also the arc sine, arc cosine, and arc cotangent. Also, functions exist for hyperbolic sine, cosine, and tangent, as well as hyperbolic arc sine, arc cosine, and arc cotangent. But that's not all. Each of these functions has three forms. I showed you one form where all the arguments are doubles. If you use the same function names with the letter F appended on the end, it's defined for floats. For example, the log function is defined for doubles, but by using the same function with the letter F, it's defined for floats. Or by appending an L onto the name, it's defined for long doubles. I know this means nothing to you if you don't understand or work with complex or imaginary numbers. You can ignore this until you need it. But if you ever do need it, it's here. You don't have to write your own complex functions anymore.